All right, so today we're diving headfirst into Leopold Aschenbrenner's situational awareness, and let me tell you, this report is no joke. It's intense. Aschenbrenner, who, by the way, used to work at OpenAI, holds absolutely nothing back. Yeah, he doesn't like his whole thing is AGI. It's not some distant sci-fi fantasy. Right. He's saying it could be here by 2027. 2027. That's like right around the corner. I mean, when I first read that, I was like, come on, is this guy serious? But the deeper I got into his arguments, the more I was like, okay, wait a minute. He's on to something with this whole counting the OMs idea, basically these massive leaps we're seeing in what AI can actually do. It's easy to miss how fast things are moving. We think, oh, it's just gradual improvement. But Ashton Brenner's like, nope, these are seismic shifts. Think of it like a kid going from like barely grasping the alphabet to boom, acing their SATs in a couple years. That's what's happening with AI. And we've already seen it look at GPT-2 compared to GPT-4. It's like those crazy time lapses where a plant goes from seed to flower in seconds. You know it's real, but it's still wild to actually witness. Exactly. And Ashton Brenner says there are a few reasons for this. One, the sheer computing power we're throwing at AI is exploding. Two, the algorithms themselves are becoming insanely efficient. But here's the real kicker. We're learning to unhobble AI. Okay, unhobbling. It sounds kind of ominous, but also like really exciting. <laughs> right. <laughs> Imagine you build this insanely powerful engine, right? But you only let it run on a tiny fraction of its fuel. Okay, I'm with you. That's what we've been doing with AI. Unhobbling is about removing those limits. More data, better tools, more efficient learning methods. We're basically handing AI the keys to the car and be like, all right, show us what you got. And Aschenbrenner uses this fascinating example, right? The math benchmark. These are like hardcore high school math competition problems, the kind that used to completely stump AI. But then all of a sudden, thanks to stuff like reinforcement learning and better access to information, AI went from failing miserably to scoring in the 90th percentile. That's unhobbling in action. Okay, that is a seriously impressive example, but it kind of leads us to the big scary question. What happens after AI surpasses human intelligence? Ashton Brenner calls this the intelligence explosion, and that's where things get really wild. Wild is an understatement. Picture this. Millions of AI scientists working 24-7, no sleep, no coffee breaks, just constantly learning and improving both themselves and each other. A decade's worth of breakthroughs, maybe more, compressed into a single year. It's mind-blowing. Okay, now that is both amazing and terrifying. It's like that scene in every sci-fi movie where the AI suddenly wakes up and realizes, oh, I'm way smarter than these humans. And this is where it gets really interesting and potentially unsettling. Aschenbrenner argues that we might be seriously underestimating the magnitude of what's coming. He uses the story of AlphaGo, that AI that mastered the game of Go, to kind of illustrate this point. It basically taught itself to play at a level that no human had ever seen before. Didn't it beat, like, the world champion? <laughs> Multiple times. And what's so fascinating is that it wasn't just copying human strategies. It was coming up with its own moves, its own style of play that nobody had ever even considered before. So it learned how to learn, essentially. Exactly. AlphaGo played against itself millions of times, mm -hmm. constantly iterating, refining, getting better. Wow. Okay, so then the question becomes, can this type of self-improvement, this ability to learn and adapt at warp speed, be applied to general intelligence? Can we build an AI that doesn't just think like a human, but then uses that thinking to become something way beyond us? That's the trillion dollar question, literally. Yeah. Because Aschenbrenner argues that this race towards AGI right. and then to something even more powerful, yeah. it's going to take a mind-blowing uh, amount of resources. The trillion dollar cluster section of the report, right. that was a real eye-opener for me. The mm. numbers he's throwing around are just astronomical. We're not just talking about software anymore. Right. It's about the physical infrastructure. Yeah. The GPUs, the data centers, the energy grids yeah. needed to support these massive AI models. Like, didn't you say Mark Zuckerberg? Oh, yeah. Just bought some ridiculous number of high-end GPUs. Try 350,000 H100 GPUs. Oh, my god. That's not just a tech upgrade. Right. It's a declaration of war. Yeah. And it's not just meta. Right. Amazon's building this gigantic data center right next to a nuclear power plant. Wow. They're basically constructing their own power grid. So it sounds like the AI arms race is already on. Oh, absolutely. But why are these companies yeah. willing to gamble such huge sums of money on something yeah. that's still so young? Because the potential payoff is yeah. just as enormous. Yeah. If AGI lives up to even a fraction of the hype, right. it could revolutionize everything. We're talking unimaginable wealth. 
Wow. A complete reshaping of the global power structure. So it's kind of like the early days of the internet, and where just, everybody knew it was going to be huge, but nobody knew exactly how. 100%. And just like the internet, AI has the potential for incredible good right. and incredibly destructive outcomes. Yeah. The big question is, can we figure out how to harness this power right. while mitigating the risks? Which brings us to that really unsettling part of the report about security. Yeah. Ashenbrenner does not have a lot of faith in our current approach to AI security. He really doesn't. Yes. <laughs> he compares it to handing the keys to superintelligence to the CCP on a silver platter. Oh, wow. He thinks the leading AI labs are treating security like an afterthought. It's like they're building the world's most powerful weapon and right. just leaving the blueprints lying around in a coffee shop. Exactly. Yeah. And the scary part is the stakes are so much higher than they were even with something like the atomic bomb. Yeah. If a hostile nation state yeah. or even just a rogue actor right. were to steal the core secrets of AGI. Yeah. We're not just talking about destructive power. Right. We're talking about the potential to control vast amounts of information. Yeah. Manipulate global financial markets. Right. Even influence elections on a massive scale. Okay, now that is seriously disturbing. That's scary stuff. And you mentioned rogue actors. Yeah. It's not just about external threats, is it? No, not at all. Ashenbrenner also talks about AI itself going rogue. Absolutely. Yeah. He dedicates a whole section to super alignment, right. which is basically the challenge of making sure these incredibly powerful AI systems yeah. remain under human control. Okay. Or at least aligned with human values and goals. That's a classic sci-fi trope, right? Totally. The AI that becomes self-aware and decides humans are the problem. Right, like we've seen that movie. But how realistic is that, really? It's hard to say for sure, but Ashenbrenner argues that our current methods of controlling AI, yeah, like using human feedback to guide its learning, right. might not be enough when we're dealing with something potentially thousands of times smarter than us. Right, because how do you even begin to control something that's that much smarter than you are? It's like a chimpanzee trying to give orders to a nuclear physicist. Yes, exactly. He uses this great example of a super intelligent AI system that writes a million lines of code. Oh, gosh. In a programming language. It invented itself. Wow. How could a human even begin to understand, right. let alone evaluate what that code is doing? It's impossible. Well, so that... what's the solution? Well, How do we make sure that these super intelligent systems yeah. don't end up turning against us? Ashenbrenner suggests a few radical ideas. One is something called chain of thought interpretability. Okay. Basically, it's about designing AI systems that can think out loud okay. in a way that humans can understand. So like giving AI an inner monologue. Yeah, kind of. That's interesting. The idea is that if we can understand the AI's thought process, yeah. we'll be able to spot any dangerous ideas right. before yeah. they turn into action. Okay. Okay. But even then, Ashenbrenner stresses that we need to be incredibly cautious right. and invest heavily in safety research. He makes a pretty strong case for slowing down he does. the pace of development, yeah. even if it means delaying the arrival of AGI. Which is a tough sell. Which a lot of people, especially in Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. They're not going to like that. Would not be happy uh, about. Yeah. But as Ashenbrenner points out, yeah. the alternative is potentially catastrophic. It could be. Can we really afford to rush into creating something this powerful right. without fully understanding the risks? It's the question. It's a sobering thought, to say the least. It really is. This isn't just about robots taking our jobs. No. It's about potentially creating something that could fundamentally reshape our entire world for better or worse for better or worse and it feels like we're the ones holding the steering wheel yeah hurtling towards an unknown destination 100 percent. and the race for ai dominance yeah isn't just about technological superiority right. ashenbrenner argues that it's a battle for values as well okay he believes the free world needs to win this race why is that he's particularly concerned about authoritarian regimes like china right using AI for social control and oppression. He paints a pretty chilling picture Yeah. of a world where AI is used to create a totalitarian surveillance state, right. monitoring citizens' every move, wow. silencing dissent and enforcing conformity on an unprecedented scale. That does sound terrifying. It's a scary thought. So is he saying that democratic values are our best defense? I think he is. Against AI being used for evil. Yeah. He argues that the free world has a moral imperative to lead the way in AI development okay. to ensure that this technology is used for good, 
not for tyranny. So with all that in mind, what does Ashenbrenner ultimately propose we do about this? Well, he ends the report Yeah. on a rather dramatic note. He calls it The Project. The infamous AI Manhattan Project. Yeah. We've got to talk about that. That's a big one. It's a pretty bold yeah. and frankly kind of frightening idea. It is. He argues that the immense power and the potential risks of superintelligence yeah. are simply too great for the private sector to handle alone. It's too big. He believes that government involvement in AI research and development yeah. is not just desirable, but inevitable. It's going to happen. So he's basically suggesting we take the most brilliant AI researchers in the world, yeah. lock them in a secret underground bunker with unlimited funding. Basically. And say... Don't come out until you've cracked the code on safe and beneficial superintelligence. That's the gist, yeah. Yeah. He envisions a highly classified, right. centralized research effort, similar to the Manhattan Project that developed the atomic bomb. Right. He thinks we need that level of focus, yeah. coordination, and security to guide the development of superintelligence responsibly. It's a heavy proposition. It is. It raises a lot of questions about transparency. Sure oversight of course and who gets to control this incredibly powerful technology right because even if we assume the best intentions yeah can we really trust any one entity right even a government right with that much power it's a valid question it is and those are all valid concerns yeah and ashenbrenner acknowledges the potential downsides of such a project okay he even admits that there are no perfect solutions oh, right but he ultimately argues that the risks of doing nothing Right. of allowing the development of superintelligence to proceed unchecked yeah. are simply too great. So he sees this AI Manhattan Project as a necessary evil. I think so. A kind of gamble we have to take to safeguard humanity's future. Yeah, exactly. He argues that if we're serious about ensuring that superintelligence is developed safely and responsibly, yeah. a coordinated, centralized, and tightly controlled research effort might be our best. Right. Or perhaps our only option. It's a lot to process. It really is. On the one hand, the idea of concentrating so much power in the hands of any single entity yeah. is unsettling, to say the least. For sure. But on the other hand, I can see his point about the potential consequences right. of allowing a technology this powerful to develop without any oversight or control. Yeah, it's a classic dilemma. It is a dilemma. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. Right. And it's something that we, as a society, need to start grappling with now. Right now. Because oh. one way or another, yeah. the decisions we make in the next few years about AI right. are going to have profound consequences for the future of humanity. It's a lot to take in. He certainly leaves us with a lot to ponder. He does. Hmm. What stood out to you the most from all of this? Oh, gosh, I don't know where to even begin. Honestly, it's how Ashen Brenner goes beyond just the tech stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he's not just talking about algorithms and processing power. Mm -hmm. He's diving into the deep end, the philosophical stuff, the ethical dilemmas. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what it means to be human in a world where we might not be the smartest ones in the room anymore. It's like he's saying, forget about politics as usual, left wing, right wing, all of that. Yeah. How do we even define ourselves when we're dealing with something potentially so much more intelligent than we are? It's like an existential crisis waiting to happen. It really is. Yeah. He argues that the big questions, the ones that really matter when it comes to super intelligent AI. Right. They go way beyond our current political squabbles. Yeah. Things like, what are our core values as a species? Mm. What does it mean to live a good life? Yeah. How do we make sure that AI, with all its potential brain power, is actually on board with those values, with what we're trying to achieve? It's a lot to unpack, for yeah. sure. And it's easy to get caught up in the fear factor. Oh, absolutely. Right. Like, super intelligent AI turning on us, becoming Skynet. Classic. Or even just the idea of a select few controlling all that power. But Ashenbrenner does hint at a more optimistic outlook, too, doesn't he? He does. He suggests that this super intelligent AI, yeah. it could be the key to solving some of our biggest problems. Climate change, diseases we can't cure, poverty, inequality. Right. Imagine a world where AI helps us unlock new sources of clean energy. Right. Develop cures for diseases that are currently a death sentence. Yeah. Maybe even create a fairer, more just world for everyone. It's a pretty compelling vision. Yeah. But it also feels kind of fragile. Oh, yeah. Like one wrong move right. and the whole thing could unravel. Exactly. It's like we're walking a tightrope. And I think that's why Ashenbrenner keeps circling back to this idea of an AI Manhattan project. It's like he sees it as this 
necessary, albeit risky way to steer this whole thing in the right direction. He's basically saying that we're facing a challenge unlike anything we've ever seen before. Right. And we need a response on the same scale. Yeah, it's a bold proposition, no doubt. But it also raises some red flags. Oh, yeah, for sure. Who gets to call the shots? Who's at the table for these discussions? And how do we make sure that a project like this, with all its potential power, actually benefits all of humanity, not just a select few? Those are the million-dollar questions. And the thing is, we can't just bury our heads in the sand and hope for the best. Exactly. We need to be having these conversations now, openly, honestly, no holds barred, the more informed we are, the better choices we can make about the future we're creating. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? What can our listeners do, you know, as individuals to really understand these issues and help shape a positive outcome? I think step one is simple. Be aware. Read Ashenbrenner's report. Talk to your friends, your family, your coworkers about this stuff. Yeah. Don't shy away from the tough questions. Engage with the ethical side of AI, the societal impact. Right. Not just the cool tech stuff. Because the more we understand, the better equipped we'll be to make the right decisions. That's great advice. And I think it's important to remember that you don't need to be like a coding whiz or a policy expert to have a voice in this. Exactly. The future of AI. It's not just up to Silicon Valley. It's up to all of us. We're all stakeholders in this. And as Ashenbrenner's report makes crystal clear, the stakes couldn't be higher. We're talking about the future of humanity here. Okay, that's a heavy note to end on, but I think it's an important one. It is. Hopefully, this deep dive into Ashen Brenner's situational awareness has given you a lot to think about. Some good conversation starters and maybe even a little bit of hope. Yeah, because as daunting as these challenges are, right. we've got just as much capacity for innovation, for working together, for making ethical choices. This isn't a done deal. The future is unwritten. We get to write it. And the choices we make right now? They're going to determine what that future looks like. That's a powerful thought to end on. So until next time, keep those brains buzzing, keep asking those tough questions, and most importantly, stay curious about the potential and the very real challenges of this AI revolution we're living through. This might be the end of our deep dive. For now. But trust me, yeah. the conversation is just getting started.